Good evening and afternoon as we record this, but for this evening for you tonight, I'm glad that you're tuning in with us. Uh, Jason is here, Laura's here, and they're going to be doing the readings as well. And we hope that and pray that our worship service this night will be a blessing to you as you hear us and yourself included to worship God and praise God. And as God comes to us with his word, and tonight we're going to be looking at by his wounds we are healed and the wounds Jesus suffered for stealing. So that will be our theme for this evening. Our first hymn this evening that we'll start out with, our song is In the Cross of Christ I Glory. begin and continue this evening calling upon the name of the Lord our God, invoking his name and his presence. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. By a perversion of justice, Christ was taken away. Who could have imagined, imagined his, his future? future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of God's people. Christ was wounded for our transgressions, crushed, crushed for, for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. By, and by his, his wounds we are healed. We now take time to confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess to you that we have broken your commandments by our own thoughts, words, and deeds. We have stolen from you in our failure to love, serve, and obey you. We have, we have not loved our, our brothers and sisters, and sisters as we ought, and, and, and we have not cared for your creation. For, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, on us and give us the healing power of your love, that, that we may walk again in your, in your ways and live to the glory of, of your, your holy name. Amen. Amen. God is gracious and he is merciful and he desires that we be made free of the burdens of our sins. Therefore, through Jesus Christ, who bore the cross for our sake and for the sake of the whole world, there is healing, there is hope, and there is life. Your sins are now forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our first reading 
coming from the Old Testament book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 15. And it reads as follows. You shall not steal. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Our next reading is our epistle reading. It will be read by Laurel at Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. Submission to the authorities. Romans 13, verses 1 through 7. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to do you good, but if you do wrong, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. We now continue with our hymn, Amazing Grace. reading today is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 23, verses 1 through 5. Luke 23, 1 through 5. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Christ, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priest and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted. He stirs up the people all over Judea. By his teaching, he started in Galilee and has come all the way here. This is the word of the Lord. Praise 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 to to you, you, O Christ. Christ. 
Our next song is, By Your Wounds We Are All Healed or Healed, depending on how you sing it, and it's going to be to the tune, Come Thou Font. Jesus said, us in this holy place. You have come to earth convicted as a child of gentle rain. By your wounds we all are healed. Sing the song of glad refrain. Jesus, by your teaching, healing, sharing me and all. You invite all those believing, everyone who hears your call. Warming hearts in hope unbounded, spreading love throughout the plain. By your wounds we all are healed. Sing the song of glad refrain. When the cries to crucify you were the wounding words to hear, even then you made all things new with forgiveness, love, and cheer. By our sin you were afflicted, on the cross you bore death's pain. By your wounds we all are healed. Sing the song of glad refrain. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our ever present, our risen Lord, and our Savior Jesus Christ. By his wounds, his wounds of stealing, you and I are healed. Let's start straight with the commandment, you shall not steal. This commandment prohibits stealing, and it's more, though, than just taking. It includes even that of the matter of paying taxes. And this commandment and encourages us to look out also for our neighbors and their well-being, helping them and even protecting them. And so thus this false charge that is trumped up against Jesus, that he forbade the paying of taxes to the emperor, it was just an attempt, a dishonest attempt by spies who were seeking to trap Jesus in words that he said. Therefore, at the trial of Jesus before Pilate, they would use this incident to try and attempt to make Jesus out to be a, a revolutionary. But Jesus silenced them all in their craftiness when he said, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. Jesus didn't steal. And yet, certainly, his mission was revolutionary. His calling was to give to God the things that are God's. And this is an indictment in the ways in which we have stolen from God ourselves. In this culture that we live in now today, stealing has become an everyday occurrence. It's people do this all the time. And now not only are we trying to protect people and the things that they own, now we even have to try to attempt to protect people's identities. Them are being taken away as well. This sin of entitlement and greed and selfishness and unequal wealth distribution among those who have, as well as those who don't have. It's something that we have to face and look at this day. The haves continue to have more and more. The have-nots continue to have not. We don't have to look too far to find evidence for this. 
as people will do everything to look out for themselves and at the same time take advantage of their neighbor. This is what stealing is all about. Taking advantage of our neighbor at all costs and by any ways. And as such, this judgment of not stealing, it's more than you and I could ever bear to pay. And yet, here is Jesus hanging on a cross between two thieves. He is sentenced to death as a criminal. Even though he did not sin, even though he did not commit the sin of stealing and being thief, there he is paying the price of a thief, being cursed on a cross. And even in his death, being associated with two thieves, he fully takes the place of the cross of punishment for stealing and being a thief. And because he was regarded as a criminal, now, now the good news is God no longer regards you and me as a criminal, as a thief, and stealing from others and stealing even from God. Now Jesus is paying that price. And now we are now treated as one of God's children. That's the good news. The good news is no longer does God look at us as a criminal. He looks now at us as one of his own children. Even though we may think and feel we are unworthy, undeserving, sinful, and criminal-like in our hearts and our minds, it no longer goes on what we think and feel about ourselves. It goes by what God thinks and feels about us. And He thinks we are His children. He treats us as one of His own children, not as a criminal. And so the struggle is, as we feel and see and sense and become accused of our criminal-like behaviors. God still loves us. And, and so the parable, the parable of the two sons, this is so paramount for us to grab a hold of and hang on in our hearts and in our minds. The beautiful story of the younger son who treated his father as though he wanted him to be dead so he could have his earthly inheritance. Well, plans didn't work out very well for him. We read of him coming home. Coming home with the sense that, yeah, he had done wrong. He had stolen from his father's good graces. And yet, the father showed extravagant love. He ran to him. He embraced him. He had a party thrown in honor of him who had come home. And yet, the older brother, the older son, reacted differently towards his younger brother. He didn't have grace for him. He had judgment and hate and anger for him because he had been criminal-like in his behavior, how he had treated his father. And yet, this too is a type of stealing, taking away God's grace and love and forgiveness for the fallen and the sinful and taking it away from them is stealing. In a cold-hearted reaction and behavior, the older brother, God also wants to love and forgive and show extravagant love. Even though he's trying to take and steal his graces from him towards others, God seeks to love both the younger son and the older son. God has an abundance of loving grace and mercy he wants to show to all thieves, all criminals under the cross. And so in Christ Jesus, 
all are now welcome home. Every criminal, every thief who has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, God willingly rushes out to, runs to, embraces and hugs and holds and invites home and celebrates and gives honor to the fallen thief who is no more treated or deemed a sinful criminal thief. He is a child of God. She is a child of God. Holy loved, holy forgiven, holy embraced that day and forever. There's another parable that happens to happen in Matthew chapter 25. And this one's about the sheep and the goats. And unless we don't get the message of the, the two prodigal sons now, now are the prodigal son and the older brother, now there's the sheep and the goats. Who are the goats? The goats are those who are bullies and they're pushing around other sheep. And, and they're taking their place at the head of the line and they muddy the waters and they, and they shoulder and they bump away the have-nots. And they want to be first and foremost and yet, they take everything that's to be given just for themselves. That, that's who the goats are, the sheep. The sheep are those who look after others. This isn't a parable on moralism. This isn't about doing good and doing right. This is about faith, being a sheep, a, a little Jesus that believes in the love and grace given to them and shares it with others. Doesn't take it away, but shares it with others. Doesn't bump to the front of the line, but shares with the neighbor who has come in need. Maybe it's physical things, and maybe it's spiritual things. This is the gospel. Felt, experienced, lived and shared by the wounds of Jesus you and I are healed or healed and by the wounds of stealing you and I are no longer criminals we're children of God sheep of his pasture, loved, forgiven, embraced, and held in great honor, in great esteem, now and into eternity. Amen. And may this peace of God that passes all understanding guard and keep our faith in Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sin of the worlds. May that be a faith that we live and have and experience in our lives, in our hearts today. Amen. Pray for the church, for all who are in need, and for the whole of God's creation. Lord, through these 40 days of Lent, you give your people hope in Jesus, who leads the way, and he takes on his body, in his body, on the cross, the sins of the whole world. Therefore, we ask, heal, heal us, us, O God. God. Lord, we thank you and praise you for all that you provide for us in this life and for all that you provide for people everywhere. Help us, Lord, to put away envy and jealousy and strife. And Lord, give us a heart filled with great gratefulness and thanks to you for all the good gifts you give for us and to the world. Therefore, we ask, heal, heal us, us, O God. God. Lord, help us to see and recognize and treat 
those who are in need with love and respect and humility, fellow, fellow grace receivers of your love. And Lord, help us to see those who are in need and who are hungry and poor and not only look out for them, but pray for them and care for them in word and in deed. And Lord, may you strengthen and may help the governments, local, city, national, state, and federal, help them to make choices and decisions that will help govern that everyone may have and receive. Help them to uphold their decisions and their legislation for the resources, for the goods to all people. Therefore, we ask, heal, heal us, us, O God. God. Lord, we lift up those who are before us now in our hearts and in our minds, in our thoughts, those who are sick and who are suffering, that they may have blessings from you of better health and wholeness. Lord, at this time, I lift up the medical workers and the doctors and the PAs and everyone involved in the hospitals and those who are making more hospitals, making more hospital rooms to treat those who are sick, those who have been infected. Guard them, protect them, strengthen them. And Lord, those who have come down with this virus, help them too through their journey. Therefore, we ask of you, heal, heal us, us, O God. God. For those who are dying, leaving all their earthly things behind, give them faith, hope, and love to embrace the greater treasures you have in store, eternal life in your presence. Thus we ask, heal, heal us, O oh God. God. Into your healing wounded hands, and for your sake, we commend all for whom we pray, and by Christ's wounds, you make us healed. Amen. Amen. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your thy kingdom come, and your will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. And give us, us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the blessing and may the healing presence of our God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is the various verses of Abide With Me.
This will conclude now our last Wednesday evening services. This coming Sunday, we'll be celebrating Palm Sunday. And the following week, we'll be doing Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday services. And we also will then have celebrate as well Easter Sunday service. Um, I'm believing that we will be doing this online as well. As such, I look forward to doing this with Jason and Laura. I'm excited about the Monday service. And if you don't know, I'm really excited by our Good Friday service. I got a couple things that I want us to do. It's going to be a little challenging, but I think you will thoroughly enjoy it as we contemplate a Monday, Thursday in the Lord's Supper, especially now in time of separation and seclusion and social distancing. As we practice social distancing, may we not practice that with our Lord and our Savior uh, I'm also looking forward to um, learning more about Zoom and ha- having and providing Bible studies that I'll be working on. Um, tomorrow night, the elders and I will be meeting probably to conclude that we will we'll be having these services online as well. One more point, and then we'll call it the evening. Um, looking at no matter when it happens, no matter when we come back together again, looking at maybe the first or second Sunday, maybe celebrating Easter once again together maybe even throwing together a a potluck i don't know we'll see what happens but maybe plant i'm throwing those seeds out there and let them be planted that easter is every sunday every sunday is a mini easter celebration may you remember that throughout your days and your time and god keep you safe and protected good evening